experts believe they may have found the nails that were used on Jesus' cross. Construction workers in Jerusalem were bulldozing a forest when they happened upon an ancient tomb. The tomb, hidden deep in an underground cave, held decaying artifacts from the first century, including two Roman nails. Researchers suggested these might be the exact nails that pinned Jesus to the cross. They thought the find was a major win, but then the nails mysteriously disappeared. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. While ripping through Jerusalem's Peace Forest in 1990, a construction crew realized they were above hollow land when they crashed right through a roof of a secret tomb. Once news of the tomb size spread, archaeologists came running. The massive rock-cut tomb had 12 chambers, six of which had been ransacked by grave robbers. The thieves had taken some instrumental clues to the tomb's origin, but four of the lost chambers were still untouched. Naturally, archaeologists pried them open. While excavating the four untouched chambers, archaeologists unearthed dozens of ancient treasures, including first-century pottery and glass perfume bottles. However, the biggest clues came when the 12 ossuaries, or bone boxes, which perhaps unsurprisingly, came in a variety of haunting forms. Some bone boxes are body-sized boxes containing the skeletons of family members, while others are massive crypts riddled with human remains. The boxes in this tomb were rather average. However, one box offered unquestionable evidence as to whom this burial site belonged to. Each of the bone boxes were engraved with intricate patterns. One elaborate box contained the bones of four children and two adults, marked with the words Yehosef bar Kayafa, or Joseph, son of Caiaphas. Anyone familiar with the Bible knows exactly who this man is. Jesus was executed by the Romans around AD 33 after being turned in by the Jewish high priest of Israel, Caiaphas, aka Joseph, son of Caiaphas. The inscription wasn't the only thing convincing researchers that this was indeed the tomb of Caiaphas, the man responsible for the crucifixion of Jesus. Between the inscription, the location of the tomb, and the date of the artifacts, archaeologists fiercely believed this to be the tomb of Christ's notorious foe. With this in mind, researchers were turning their attention to another discovery from the excavation a pair of iron nails. The two iron nails had been found in separate places, one inside a bone box and another on the dirt floor. After being tossed into the inventory, the nails were misplaced. When researchers came looking for them months later, they began searching like mad. Researchers eventually halted their search after turning up nothing. Perhaps they thought this clue to one of the largest events in human history had been tossed in the garbage, heartbreaking as it may be. All hope was lost until 2011, when Simcha Jacobovici made headlines for a big discovery. Simcha Jacobovici claimed to have found the two missing nails from the excavation of Caiaphas's tomb, garnering international attention. To explain his case, he released a 2011 film titled Nails of the Cross. Everyone wanted to know how Jacobovici made this supposed discovery. After hearing of the 1990 excavation and the missing nails, Jacobovici combed museum nail collection across Israel. He searched without the aid of photographs, measurements, or drawings, making his mission all the more difficult. That's when he came upon a set of nails in a different type of collection. After months of searching, Jacobovici found a pair of iron nails in an anthropology laboratory at Tel Aviv University. Anthropologists said the nails had been received in an unmarked box, which filled Jacobovici with hope. Could this be the missing pair? Lab workers didn't have official records of the nails arriving at the university. However, they did know that the nails were made of iron, dating back to the first century. Jacobovici was convinced these were the Caiaphas nails, leading to his notorious film. People had a lot of questions. Critics of Nails of the Cross said Jacobovici lacked enough evidence to make the science work in his favor. However, while people weren't 100% convinced by his ludicrous theory, they admitted that some of it made perfect sense. In fact, Jacobovici seemed to be building a strong case. For instance, Jacobovici knew the nails were used in a crucifixion because of the way they were bent. Both nails had been hammered upwards, as was common in that method of execution. The purpose? To keep people from lifting their body from the cross. While this evidence was compelling, Jacobovici had even more to offer. Throughout history, crucifixion nails were made into healing amulets, 
Jacobovici believed this gave Caiaphas a reason to keep the nails without knowing their significance. If Caiaphas did know their significance, said Jacobovici, he might have kept them out of guilt. Still, there was one crucial piece of evidence missing. Without a team to take a serious look at the nails in question, Jacobovici was written off for his findings. Almost a decade later, when Jacobovici's film was far from everyone's minds, researchers decided to examine the nails with new technology. Their findings put Jacobovici right back in the spotlight. In 2020, a team of researchers used an electron microscope to reanalyze the nails' composition. First, they studied the old bone boxes and sediment from the Caiaphas tomb. Then they examined the chemical composition of the nails. If the samples matched, the findings could exonerate Jacobovici's claims. To Jacobovici's delight, the two iron nails contained the same exact material found in the remains from Caiaphas's tomb. Not only that, but the nails had slivers of wood and bone both outside and inside, meaning they were undoubtedly used in a crucifixion. But was it the crucifixion of Jesus? If you look at the whole story, historical, textual, archaeological, they all seem to point at these two nails being involved in a crucifixion, says Jacobovici. Since Caiaphas is only associated with Jesus' crucifixion, you put two and two together and they seem to imply that these are the nails. However, the find was complicated by another biblical discovery. The Shroud of Turin is believed by many to depict the literal face of Jesus Christ following his burial. It's one of the most coveted historical relics known to man, and its mystery may have finally been solved. The Shroud of Turin is a simple piece of twill cloth bearing traces of blood and a subtle imprint of a man's body. Thousands of people visit the Shroud each year to see the object that covered Jesus Christ's battered body prior to the resurrection. The Shroud itself is part of a rich legend of biblical proportions. It was allegedly taken from the tomb of Jesus Christ and carried from Judea to Turkey and later Constantinople. There it was kept and guarded for centuries. In 1353, the Shroud popped up in a tiny church in Lyrie, France. How it arrived there is inexplicably unknown. The Catholic Church publicly acknowledged its existence when it emerged in this unlikely location. In the 1980s, the Church finally permitted the Shroud to be examined. A group of scientists used radiocarbon dating to analyze the cloth, concluding that the Shroud was crafted between 1260 and 1390. This suggested the Shroud was an ingenious and elaborate fake, which ruffled feathers. Religious zealots and critics alike immediately argued that researchers used patched up portions of the shroud that could vary in age depending on when they were done. This would result in an inaccurate estimate. According to the Gospel of Matthew, upon Jesus' death, the earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open, indicating that a massive earthquake occurred. Some geologists argued that an earthquake of a high magnitude could have released a surge of neutrons that would throw off the radiocarbon dating. In the most recent 2015 study, a geneticist named Gianni Baraccia and his team analyzed dust carefully extracted from the shroud. These dust particles contain traces of both plant and human DNA. Baraccia then separated and sequenced the human mitochondrial DNA, which is passed from mother to child. The genetic lineage of the sequenced DNA suggested that the garment had been touched by people in North Africa, East Africa, and even China.